evening and welcome to KNTV's LGBT call-in show. This is the Gay Liberation Network. And tonight we're going to talk about sexual harassment free spaces for the LGBT community. We're going to talk about what to do in the bar, what not to do in the bar, uh, and among friends and in other, in other social situations. But before we get started on that topic, I want to talk about, we're, we're going to present a couple of actions that are coming up. Gay Liberation Network is a direct action group uh, here in Chicago. And this weekend on Sunday, uh, there is a March for Abortion Rights Oppose the Right to Life uh, uh, protest that is going on downtown at, at Federal Plaza at 1.30 on Sunday the 14th. Also this weekend is a event called Why Chicago Leaders Hate the Homeless. It will be at 10 a.m. Sunday the 21st at 3rd Unitarian Church, which is 301 North Mayfield. And also on the 21st, which is about 10 days from now, uh, there will be an action in, in uh, recognition of the first anniversary of the inauguration of the Trump administration to stop racism, war, and bigotry at the Trump Tower. So put those on your calendar this Sunday as well as the following Sunday. Uh, both, right, I think everything was on Sunday. So um, Tonight I'd like to introduce uh, Jess Scheinflug uh, and, uh, and I will start out by saying uh, my name is Brent Holman Gomez and I use the he and him pronouns. Thanks, Brent. I am Jess Scheinflug. I use they, them pronouns, and I've been a member of Gay Liberation Network for probably about a year now, so I've got to spend some great time with majority of cis white gay men at our monthly meetings, and it's been lovely. <laughs> Glad to have you on the show, Jess. Mm -hmm. And to clarify for viewers what I mean by cis, I mean cisgender, so it's people who identify with the sex that the doctor assigned them at birth, so it's the opposite of transgender. Our topic this evening is about creating spaces that are open to all aspects of, uh, uh, of the LGBTQIA population as well as, uh, you know, all genders. And uh, so one particular hot spot for these issues too, that we should talk about and address are bars. And uh, we all know that things can get very intimate very quick um, in bars. Sometimes they're very crowded and, um, and we're all over each other. Um, there's uh, some aspects of that that, uh, that I wanted to talk to you about, Jess. Uh, in, they are special places. It's not Disneyland. You're not going there to go you know, for, for a, a family experience. <laughs> and um, and uh, there's, you know, not everybody in the bar is seeking love and action. So, I mean, we've all, we've all had some experiences. Why don't you share what we're talking about? Yeah, I, th I think that this conversation originally came up between us because we were talking about I think we were talking about how I'm the only person who is an assist gender man who is at the meetings and I was talking about just, you know, average experiences as a person who's not a man at the bar, at a gay bar, and how gay men think that it's okay to touch gender nonconforming folks or women or other people because they're gay. So the assumption I think is, and you can probably speak more to this, is I don't I don't actually want to sleep with you. So I could still, you know, slap your butt or touch you in places that it wouldn't be okay for a straight man to touch you. And I think for me personally and lots of other folks who don't identify as men, so identify as the, anything, whether it's gender nonconforming, non-binary, um, across the spectrum, and then obviously women, um, again, whether you're, you're cis or trans, I think it's... They're going to, I think a lot of them are going to hear me say this and they're going to be like, why are you on CAN TV talking about something that's common sense? Like, we've all had this experience of, of 
both straight and gay men doing this to, to us and you would assume that at a gay bar if you were to do this to me at a gay bar I would assume you're gay but sometimes you you don't know like how do I like there could be a straight man at a gay bar but regardless it's a man who is touching someone's body without their consent and without their permission and lots of times the trauma and the effects of that and just the like level of it's more than discomfort it's feel, not feeling safe the the effects are still still the same and i think that again this is something that is going to be common sense for all non-men and maybe something that um lots of cisgender gay men don't don't realize i i, I don't know i'm not sure I, no i agree and that, and you know again with the uh, the national discourse that's going on about uh sexual har harassment um it came up at the meeting that just because you're you're LGBT doesn't exclude you doesn't mean that you haven't participated in these same offensive behaviors as Harvey Weinstein and and the other folks that that have been talked about um, that we too have these same have some of these uh, social uh, experiences and we need to call out you know that that's the the role of Gay Liberation Network. We're a direct action organization. We want to change society right here in your living room. So, uh, <laughs> so that's so we. This is relevant because you know, I think we've all you know you you, bet, you go to the bar, people do touch you inappropriately, or touch you in ways that are not the norm. And you brought up a great word, Jess, consent. And being able to judge that in a bar is, is different than it is in other places. Um, so there's a graphic here that'll show that, but, you know, we'll talk about consent. Generally, it's something that, that needs to be clear, coherent, willing, and ongoing with the other person. In a bar and also in a very brief relationship, um, what are some things that that gives signs of consent or willingness to be kissed or touched? Um, I think that oftentimes if it's someone who I know, even if it is a bar, before I hug any of my friends or any partner or anyone, I ask, like, can I give you a hug or do you want a hug? And for me personally, if they can't hear me, I'm not going to ask them and I'm not going to do it because I, a lot of times it, it is a verbal thing for me. I think that, you know, you can put your arms out, and if the other person doesn't put their arms out or reciprocate, then then don't go in for it. Um, the same thing with kissing. If you, you don't lean in all the way, you lean in. You can lean in 90% of the way and wait for the other person. And, you know, there's different ways to, to negotiate when you're dancing with someone who you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I can only speak from my own experience, but... This is something that in the queer groups that I regular I regularly hang out with, this is this is just like common practice. Like it's can I hug you? How are you doing? Or like even can I hold your hand? It's always everything is always about consent when you're gonna touch somebody else's body. Um, so it's just natural. So I don't it's awkward for me to be like, how do you navigate this in a gay bar? Especially for men, because I think it's a different space. Right and I totally agree. From my experience as a cisgender uh, gay man, genderqueer folks seem to be a lot more respectful of body, you know, space, and um, and, and than than are cisgender men as a as a whole. I would also just add to your thoughts that uh, staying in eye contact with the person, making a formal introduction, are ways to create a a uh, a more consensual relationship and also give that person the time to walk away or you know get you know get out of the situation we have a slide that we'd like to share and talk about that exhibits a lot of the toxic um, aspects of these mass parties or, or masculine focused uh, gay parties these are not LGBT events uh, that we are aware of, you know, that, that happen at bars and nightclubs, they are very much focused specifically on the cisgendered gay man. Predominantly and white. 
Yes, agreed. Um, so we'll just talk through some of them. The, the, um, the slide that you're seeing in front of you was created by Jeff Lavelle and the DJ Mateo um, to showcase some of the you know, poor behavior that they saw going on within uh, the gay nightclub scene. Leave your emotions at the door. Also a $25 cover. <laughs> yeah, so I get, again, I think that my initial reaction to that is all the privilege seeping in. Also a $25 cover because it's not just, you know, gay cis men. It's white men who are of, like, some sort of close to middle class stature. Um, parties that I go to that are hosted by people of color or focused on the trans and gender nonconforming community, the cover is usually, like, suggested donation of $5. And everyone gives it because they want to support their community because you know, our, our labor is often so it's not valued. And then this is like, I don't know. Right. This. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, obviously that men, men can't have feelings. So. So, I mean, you know, this is a, events like this, I mean, this is a, uh, uh, you know, a joke, but, um, Events like this, aspects of this culture do exist. We see, you know, no drag queens, women, or anything that represents them. Midnight performance of guys punching each other. So <laughs> you can tell that there there is a lack of appreciation for, you know, for someone's body, and uh, harassment is indeed what's on what's on sale. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really interesting is the person who co-created this. Uh, put out a follow-up article saying that, I think he said surprised, maybe he might have used the word disgusted, maybe I'm uh, projecting a little bit, but a lot of people's response to this was like, I would go to that party, and it just reiterated the idea that a lot of gay cis white men look for this and love it, and this toxicity that is just like so embedded in, in the culture. Um, as a non-binary person who was assigned female at birth, I don't feel welcome in these spaces, and I laugh when I hear straight women talking about, oh, I wanted to have my bachelorette party in Boys Town, and I walked in, and they were so mean to me because I'm not gay, and I'm like, they weren't mean to you because you're straight, they were mean to you because you're not a man. And it doesn't matter if you're, if you're gay or straight, anything that doesn't look like this person on the poster or someone trying to look like this person on the poster is, stands out like a sore thumb at most bars in Boys Town. And we can all have fun and still be respectful of each other and enjoy each other. So, um, consent uh, is the word that we want to be focused on here this evening. And um, thanks to DJ Mateo and Jeff Lavelle for creating this uh, this graphic that you know that shows off some of the some of the things that we need to address as a as a group. Definitely, and the consent graphic is thanks to Rape Victim Advocates, our VA. They are a local group that works on a lot of the rape and sexual assault and sexual violence that um, is rampant, rampant all over the country, but they're, lo they're based in Chicago. Um, they have a lot of resources, so I really encourage folks to check out Rape Victim Advocates. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of great resources if you just Google consent. Um, and talking about the, the setting of the bar, it is, it's tricky and I don't, I don't know that this is something there's resources for because I think consent requires the word yes. Like unless you hear yes, it's not, for me it's not consent and um, that doesn't mean that's true for everyone else and other people have different boundaries and I mean, when, when there's parties, again, that are specifically that I know that are hosted by gender, queer, and trans people of color, they talk of, when they get on the stage to introduce performers, they talk about, don't kiss someone without asking them, like, if you don't feel safe, come let us know. Like, they, this space is created and it's very intentional, and there are ways that everything is navigated and that people respect, whereas this stereotypical white gay cis man space we're talking about looks very much like that poster. So they're, they're very different ends of the spectrum.
and it's called LGBT when really it's just it's just the G. This is a live call-in show. We invite your calls. Uh, the number is there on the screen. Um, beyond the bar, among friends, uh, and I've seen this across bisexual and gay um, uh, environments, that there, you know, there are things that um, that people do. Uh, as an expression of intimacy or think, thinking that they're, that they're being, showing that they are extra friendly, um, that involve sexual harassment and, you know, groping of people. Specifically, my experience is, you know, gay men thinking that they can touch their straight woman pal's breast. Um, and that generally that's not appropriate, uh, you know, not, not, well, it's not appropriate, but it's also not, um, ex, you know, accepted by the by the straight pal um, so I just I'm any? curious like what what do you think is the intention behind that or like why like as a gay man who has probably seen this happen time and time again like mm -hmm. what do you think is going on in gay cis men's head when they're like this is gonna be cute I'm just gonna like slapped this person's boobs like what's happening there I would say my experience is that it's a mix of you know being in in the sexually liberated bar environment and then trying to say hey we're friends we can do these things too and frankly I think it's possible you can when you've had some respectful uh, a, you know addressing of that you know that you do want to express that kind of uh, bodily intimacy um, you know people can do whatever they want but mm -hmm. you, you know th there needs to be a convert you say it needs to be you know verbalized um, you know can I hug you and you every know, time it's ongoing you know, is one of the slides from rape victims advocate it's not just like you said I can hug you today, so tomorrow when I go to hug you, I can just do it. It's you. You constantly have to ask, but it's so interesting because when I want when I want to give gay men the benefit of the doubt, I'm assuming you're exactly what you're saying. You you know we're friends. We have this close relationship, and that's the way that you want to show it. And and I can understand that, but then I'm just like the trauma and the the way that men operate with thinking that they have access to do whatever they want to other people's bodies like I get stuck in that and I also get stuck in like you don't see anybody doing that to men like what like <laughs> how what would happen if that was the norm that like women went up to men at gay bars and just like touched a body part that they would never ever touch Right. I mean, it's bizarre, right? Like it, that, that it idea is, sounds is, so crazy. Well, and as we talked about at the meeting, I, you know, <laughs> it's it's hard to kind of explain the, uh, you know, the the thought process process that perhaps you know that that happens to, on occasion. I mean, at the same time, I think most, uh, you know, most gay men would not appreciate that same straight gal pal coming up and grabbing him in, in their groin. You know, like that's. So, yeah, it's interesting because we're, you know, we're, you introduced this as talking about a lot of issues that exist nationally among, you know, the mainstream exist in different ways in the LGBTQIA community. And I think that talking about this has, for me, has little to do with sexuality and has everything to do with this toxic masculinity and the patriarchy and the way that that, that plays out. And I think that you know, it's almost, it's out of a place, you know how they say hurt people hurt? It's, I think it's out of this place of hurt that, that gay men create this, like, toxic masculinity because they were probably oppressed or persecuted or marginalized in some way for being gay, so they are trying to overcompensate, right? And I can have all of this empathy for that, like, in a, in, on an individual basis, but as a whole, it's like, you're, you're not different sometimes you're actually worse because of this overcompensation and this this either lack of awareness of it or 
And then when it is pointed out, it's like it, people they get defensive and are like, but I'm gay and like I'm also discriminated against. I've talked about this with my partner and he works at a nightclub and his immediate response was, it's not just gay men and women or or gender queer folks it's also people don't always go to the bar and you know looking for anything but a drink you know they're just going to hang out they're not looking for sex or other romantic relationships and so um making some effort to uh, have a consensual relationship to address people respectfully, verbally, uh, make eye contact, and treat them as a whole person um, are some of the things that uh, can make the, the bar experience more positive for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think men checking their privilege, no matter what other identities you hold as a man in this country, there are things that you're able to do that other folks aren't able to do and the example that, uh, that of this that a woman would never do this in reverse a straight woman would never do it to a gay man i think kind of speaks volumes to to um just how deeply embedded sexism and misogyny are in our culture so um please do make plans uh to come out with us on sunday to the march for abortion rights women's rights have been you know continually under attack for the last you know f forever uh, <laughs> so um this is the this is the, a wonderful event that uh, we get a big group out to really um, aggressively call for the right to an abortion which many groups are are hesitant to say that those words but abortion is health care health care is a right oppose the right to life uh, event and come out at 1 30 p.m on sunday in two days uh, to federal plaza i think that this is a really important event for <clears throat> folks too because um it's a counter protest right it's a counter protest to right for life people and a lot of the the right for life folks aren't for you know, healthcare. They're not for a lot of programs that would actually help people have a healthy life. Um, and they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And they, they're they a big thing and it's really invested in every year. And then on the other side, you have us opposing this with not as much money, but like way more grassroots level community organizing and passion. So this, I think, especially for folks who've who've never been to a protest this is a really cool thing to witness so again that is going to be sunday january 14th at 1 30 p.m at 219 south dearborn street which is federal plaza please wear a hat and gloves <laughs> following sunday is going to be the why chicago leaders hate the homeless um, this is going to be an event that is on the 21st at 10 a.m. at 3rd Unitarian Church, which is 301 North Mayfield. So this is going to talk about um, overall the city of Chicago and different ordinances, the way that the police treat the homeless, the way that older people treat the homeless. Um, there's been a lot in the news, I think, both locally and nationally about um, police and city officials throwing away people's homes, which is their private property. So this will be a great event to learn more about that. And then the same day um, that afternoon at 1 p.m. at Trump Tower, Walker and Wabash um, will be a protest of the first anniversary of the inauguration of Donald Trump. See you on the streets. <laughs>